Guys, Mark Goldberg here from Mark Vlogs Watches with a quick word for your friend and mine, Archie Luxury, Paul Pluta, AC3, Archibald Chesterfield III. You know, he invented the quick whist watch check, and uh, the rest of us on YouTube, well, we just stole it. Help keep Archie full-time on YouTube by liking this video, watching this video, tell your fuckhead friends, and make sure to subscribe to his Patreon. And now, Archie Luxury. Hey guys, Archie Luxury on the Paul Pluto channel doing paid reviews. Tonight we're doing paid review 9N58. This is for Richard, <clears throat> 9N58. Before we start that, let's do a quick whist, whist watch check. I'm wearing a JJ Lecoutre. Jager Lecoultre, Reverso, Reverso Grande Date. Okay, guys, this is for Richard. Hey, Paul, just a quick email to say I will do another paid review with you. The last one you did was AU35. In it, I asked what the best everyday Rolex would be that would also keep its value. Anyway, anyhow, anyway, you recommended the Rolex Milgau C Blue. Well, today I just picked it up after a few months wait the construction is outstanding absolutely stunning it's not a watch that screams rolex to the casual eye it's a watch with a very fun personality that is also able to pull off a serious professional look it's the boris johnson of the watch world without your advice i honestly don't think i would have considered this watch uh without your advice realistically i would not have i would would not likely have a rolex right now so I want to say a big thanks. Uh, what I love is for you to do a paid review and talk about the Rolex Milgau C Blue. You obviously have a soft spot for this watch. I can see why. So I'd love to give you the opportunity to talk about this watch here. I'll let you freestyle on what you want to talk about when you do the vid. But some ideas you might want to cover. Why do I like it? What makes this one one of the best Rolex sports watches in your opinion? Do you think it's a future collectible? Do you think it will be discontinued in 2020? Uh, I paid near retail. Unfortunately, I could not get a discount. I did try. Uh, okay, dokey. So, so what do I, what do I think there? Well, I got to tell you, man. Uh, for starters, the Rolex Milgauss, and, and look, I don't just mean the Z Blue. I think out of all the the colors, you've got the Z Blue. You've got the black with the with the, the green um, anti-glare glass. Then you've got the black with the not, no anti-glare, and you've also got the white. Out of those four combos, uh, out, of, out of those four choices, I'd have to say the Z Blue is the pick of the litter. Uh, I've always been a huge blue fan as a kid. Uh, when I was a youngster, I would only wear blue t-shirts, blue shirts, blue shirts. I, that was my color. Blue, blue was the color. Um, what do I think there? I, I think, look, the Milgauss itself there, it's a legendary watch. The famous Milgausses from way back were the plastic glass. That's the uh, acrylic. They were the, the ones that were very, very famous was the 1019. That was the very, very famous one. Um, uh, I got to tell you, it was very, very famous. The 1019. It was famous uh, because that was the, the highly, one of the highly collectibles. There were Milgauss's... Um, before that, but the 1019 is kind of like the 1060. That's the one the most famous, highly collectible. Black dial had the the special hands, and uh, it kind of set the trend. When Rolex relaunched the Milgaus with Sapphire, uh, they made it more modern. I always thought this was a very cool watch indeed. Prices were more expensive than a no date sub. Uh, and they, they, they really were so cool. I love the three-hand Rolex pieces. I really do love them. The three hands are so damn cool. Um, the thing about the Milgauss that I love is I love the fact it's, 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 it's just so simple and elegant. I've, you know, I used to love a date. I used to like all these complications, but they're a real bitch to set. 
The beauty of the Milgauss is that the big draw factor is its anti-magnetic properties. So it's not affected by Gauss, hence the term Milgauss. The Gausses, fuckers. So, i got to say, honestly, as a sports watch, it's stainless steel, very durable, just funky as fuck. When they put that, that when they relaunched it with that, that, that second hand, fuck, it just, just pops. Um, I just think, you know, just to have one Rolex, a Milgauss fucking popped. And I, I had seven, seven stunners, seven, 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 I had the... Two-tone Daytona Maserati Blue. I had two-tone Bluesy Explorer 2. Milgauss Black. That's the non-GV. Uh, I had the 39 mil Explorer 1. And I had an Air King. Air King. What else did I have? Anything else? No, that was it. Six. Six. Six watches. I had six. And... If I if I could pick one now and say which one do you want, Archie? I I think the fucking Milgauss was a stunner. Just simple, wind and wear, just it just punched really really cool. Uh, I I I like a date on a watch, but fuck it, they're a pain in the ass to set. Real pain in the ass to set. So I've got to be be honest with you um yeah that's that's kind of the big um uh that is kind of the big problem um you know i just like the simplicity of the whole thing as you get older uh i've got to be honest with you as you get older you kind of get sick of setting the date and fucking around with it you just want something simple wind and wear so I love the simplicity, and also I think it's so much more of a watch than an Oyster Perpetual rod. There's nothing wrong with an Oyster Perpetual. People love the rhodium dial. People, Clive has even loved the white dial, and I get it. An Oyster Perpetual's cool, but I think if you can just pay a little bit more and get into the sports line, you really, really are heading in a better, better way there. Uh, that's what I think. Um, that's what I, I would be doing there. Um, uh, I, I would, uh, I would just be pushing it just a wee bit more. Um, I think you just got to, you know, the, the, the thing about it is if you're going to get an Oyster Perpetual, they're a great watch, they're fantastic, but just a little bit more. We're in a sports, we're in a sports genre. That's, that's kind of... That's kind of an important element to it there. Uh, and that, that's why I like I just like the simple elegance. And I like the Milgauss. It's a scientist watch. Yes, IWC's got the Ingenua. But Ingenua, they've completely fucked it up. I mean, IWC fucked it up when they started chasing car racing. They they rebranded that model, which they fucked it up. So I think, I think the Milgauss is just a true, true scientist. I like this mad scientist sort of shit genre. It's very sexy. Uh, what makes you think uh, this is one of the best everyday sports watches? Well, I've just, as I've said, there, it's just simple elegance. I love the, the funky second head. Just, just cool. Goes back to the old 1019 days. That was the the, the plastic Milgauss. They're, they're they're worth a fortune, absolute fortune. There. Do I think it'll be a future classic? Look, that's <coughs> that's a really tricky question because the big problem is the big problem is that. Rolex themselves there, um, they, they, any modern Rolex is in such huge numbers. They have really mass produced these fucking things. So will any, I mean, I, I said this years ago and then all of a sudden, um, I, uh, um, I gotta be honest with you, uh, it's it's just one of these things there. You've got to watch it. You got to you got to watch it. You got to watch it. Um, I I tend to think. I tend to think, the um, future classics. Look, there's so so much big numbers, but I I think they're special. I I honestly think the Milgauss fills a really good niche there. Um, 
Future Classic, of course. A any of these, any Rolex is a future. Any Rolex Steel Sports is Future Classic. I think it's just a quiet achiever. It's like the Explorer 2, just belts along under, under, you know, you've got the Saab and the GMT, you know, fucking punching away. And underneath you've got the Explorers, just got the Milgaus, the Yacht Meister, just, just casually sitting there. Uh, and, I, and I think they're, they're, they are a classic. They're a classic. They're a classic. No question at all. They, they are a classic. Do I think they'll be discontinued? Well, if they were discontinued, I've got to be honest with you. Um, if, if they were discontinued, uh, if they were, they would soar in price. I, I don't see them, them really doing that. I can't see them doing, doing the discontinuing because if they discontinue it, they're going to explode in price. I, I don't know why they discontinue it because it's a perfectly good model. Steel Sports got that genre the engineers it's a brainy brainiac sort of watch there you know it it's it's why would they discontinue it i mean um <clears throat> why i don't understand why you would discontinue the milgauss the milgauss isn't a disaster it's a it's a fucking great model you'd have i don't know why they why anyone would say they discontinue it Why? I don't know why you do that. It's a good. I mean, <coughs> the Milgauss, will they dis I mean, they might mis discontinue Yachty, Yachtmeister 1, but I don't know if they discontinue the Milgauss. Why would you do that? The Milgauss is a great watch. It fills a good niche. No, I don't. I, 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 don't, I don't. I mean, if they did, it would soar in price, but I, I, I can't see them doing that. Rolex is very lazy. Rolex likes to tow the status quo. They upgrade movements gradually over time. You know, I I don't think it would. Um, I don't think it's going to be discontinued. No, 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 no. So uh, I gotta say, man, the Milgas is just a great watch. If if I if I was to have one wrist wrist watch if i was to only have one wrist watch if i could only have one uh you know if i if i could only afford one wrist watch what wrist watch would it be that's a good question um i would say seriously if if i could have one wrist watch what would it be uh dear liza dear liza there's a hole in the bucket, dear Liza. A hole. If I could have one wristwatch, what would I want? Well, I'd want something waterproof. That's what I would want. I want a waterproof wristwatch. I want something that is high. I, I like something that is is absolutely stunning, uh, cool, and uh, beautiful. That's what I want. I want something cool. I want something sexy. I want something that really has pizzazz to it uh i want something simple i got as i'm getting older i'm becoming more and more lazy i want to become lazy lazy i'm a bit lazy and and i get it you know i understand i've i've kind of in life i've grown up i'm lazy yes yes i am lazy uh i tend to think the, the Milgauss is just perfect. If I had to have one wristwatch, that could be the perfect one piece. Bolex to have! Uh, I... I... Uh, I don't have a problem. Uh, I don't have a problem with it there. Um, I, I think it's... It, it's uh, the thing about the Milgauss is it's just so cool. It's so cool. You know, you got all these... you got the, the day dates. Well, that's flat peacocks. You know, you look at it and say, well, look, they don't want to do that. I don't want to get a date just. Date just is too passe. Oyster Perpetual, too passe. Milgauss, Milgauss, Millie. I want the fucking Millie. I want the Millie. I want the Millie. And that's the whole thing. The Milgauss just pops. It's Millie the Milgauss. It's just cool, man. Uh, it just, I don't know what it is about it. It just is more than the sum of the parts. And I think it's just classic, iconic. Just it's a watch you could keep forever. So 
I, I would like to get one again, actually. I, I got rid of the Explorer, which, you know, I got rid of it because I needed to get another paddock. Because the other fucking rodents, the rodents were gnawing at my lead. So I just put five paddocks in the way to fuck them all up. But I I do want to get a Rolex. You know, I love Rolex. And I think Milgauss, if I could get the Z Blue, fuck. Beautiful watch. Absolutely beautiful. So, yeah, I'll give it a bit of time. I'll give it a bit of time. We'll just see how I go. But that's that's the way I feel about it. So, guys, like, subscribe. Tell your fuckhead friends. Don't be afraid to put some nasty comments down below. And don't be afraid to get a paid review. Get a paid review. I'll tell you what I think. I'll put some really good comments. You'll love it. You'll really, really love it. And that's the important thing. I love to see what you lust after and what you're doing in your collection. If it's garbage, I'll tell you it's garbage. If it's cool, I'll tell you it's cool. I'm Paul Pluto. Tell me what you fuckeroonies think of that. David SW. David SW. David SW. Who does Archie Luxury recommend is the greatest grey market dealer in America? There's only one choice. David SW. That's right, guys. I've got to tell you the honest truth. I have, for a long time, been looking for the perfect answer. Who do I recommend people go to see? Who do I recommend that people can go and uh, buy watches? And I've got to be honest with you. The greatest, the greatest pre-owned dealer for Rolex, Padek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, is David SW. David SW. David SW. David SW.com. That's right, guys. I have been looking for a contact who I can very nicely refer people to. I am not in the selling business. Customer service. I'm too old to sell watches. I'm too old. I like to recommend my viewers to a reliable source. In Australia, I've got some great sources. There's uh, Sydney Watch Exchange with Cove. Rani at Vintage Watch Co. Shani. Shani at European Watch Gallery. And in America, who is the best source for pre-owned Rolex? For all the hot models? There's only one person I would recommend. David SW. David SW. David SW. That is the premier source for pre-owned Rolex. I gotta be completely frank and honest with you. Guys, if you are looking for a hot Rolex model, there is only one place you can go to. David SW. David SW. David SW. Let's be honest, guys. There's no point schmoozing, schmoozing, schmoozing the dealers, the ADs. They're just a waste of time. Unless you're gonna buy 20 pieces, you are wasting your time. What you're better off to do is pay the market premium and go to a good, good pre-owned dealer. Who do I recommend? David SW. David SW. David SW. That's correct, guys. I want to tell you this now. I 100% stand behind David SW. David SW, the greatest pre-owned dealer in the entire United States of America. That's right. The greatest pre-owned dealer for Rolex, for Patek Philippe, for Audemars Piguet, David SW. He even does things like FP Jean. David SW, David SW, David SW. That's right. If you want to buy a pre-owned Rolex, a Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, there's only one Good source I would recommend. David SW. David SW. David SW. I'm Paul Pluto, the method actor who plays Archibald Chesterfield III, and I'm proud to recommend David SW. See you later. Thank you for watching this channel. Hey guys, Archie Luxury. Archie Luxury does Louis Vuitton. Guess what, guys? I've got my own little box back. It's come back and it looks beautiful. I missed him so much. I missed him. I missed my little 
Crawford Trezo and uh, I love him. I just love him to death. Love him to death. I love him, Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Oh, honey, though our friendship ceases from now 